We want to welcome our viewers in the United States and around the world to a special edition of The Situation Room. I'm Wolf Blitzer in the CNN Election Center. The presidential candidates in both parties, they're standing by for results from tonight's very important Indiana primary. Polling places in the Eastern Time Zone in Indiana. They're closing right now. We expect the first votes very soon. Less than an hour from now, voting in the Central Time Zone will end. And once the last polls close, we will have a chance to project winners. Donald Trump is aiming for another big victory tonight. He's hoping to deliver a serious blow to Ted Cruz, as well as John Kasich, and possibly derail their goal of a contested GOP convention. Trump now has just over 1,000 delegates. A victory tonight would put him closer to 1,237, that's the number he needs, to win the nomination outright. 57 Republican delegates are up for grabs in Indiana. The statewide winner will get 30 of those delegates. The other 27 delegates are doled out based on who wins each congressional district. On the Democratic side, we may see a tight contest between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. Win or lose, Clinton expects to pick up delegates. That will take her closer to clinching the nomination. Sanders often does well in open primaries like this one, where independents are also allowed to vote, not just registered Democrats. 83 Democratic delegates are at stake in Indiana. They're split proportionally, so neither candidate will walk away empty-handed. Jake Tapper, over to you. All right, thank you so much, Wolf. Even as Indiana voters were at the polls today, the war of words between Donald Trump and Ted Cruz escalated to a whole new level. Let's check in at Trump headquarters in New York. CNN's Jim Acosta is there. And Jim, Donald Trump pushing this ridiculous report from the National Enquirer that Ted Cruz's dad was involved with Lee Harvey Oswald. Oh, that's right, Jake. But uh, keep in mind, there is a primary uh, that we still have to get results from tonight. And as for that primary, a Trump source tells me they believe tonight's expected win will make the GOP frontrunner Donald Trump the presumptive nominee for the Republican Party. But the campaign is not shifting totally into general election mode just yet. They do not believe they will hit that magic number of 1,237 delegates, Wolf just mentioned, before California coming up in June. So they can't relax at this point, basically, is the message. Despite all the chatter about Trump and who his running mate might be inside the beltway, a Trump source tells me there are no signs a big betting effort is underway to pick a vice presidential running mate. And as this source put it, they are still trying to get the party comfortable with Trump as the nominee. Now, that effort uh, may have been hampered somewhat today, Jake. Uh, the Trump campaign is not providing any proof that Ted Cruz's father was involved in the Kennedy assassination, a story that was lifted right out of the National Enquirer by Donald Trump. And they're not offering any apologies either. Trump sources tell me they feel Cruz was absolutely knocked off his game today. A huge win with a Y, huge with a Y win, as one source described it to me. And just at a time when Cruz was trying to paint Trump as unfit to be president, uh, the real estate tycoon was able to put out that statement, Jake, that described the Texas senator as desperate. Jake. All right, Jim Acosta, thanks so much. No proof, of course, because it isn't true. Let's check in uh, with the uh, Cruz campaign. Sunland Sarfati is in Indianapolis, uh, Indiana. And Sun Sunland, a lot of eyes on Ted Cruz tonight to see if he can actually pull off a victory in that key state this evening. That's right, Jake. High stakes here for the Cruz campaign and really a sense of anxiety within the campaign going into tonight. Now, a top Cruz campaign official tells me that Senator Cruz has written and prepared two versions of his speech tonight. One version, should he pull off a surprise win here in Indiana. The second version, if he has a defeat here in Indiana. Uh, but Cruz campaign officials continue to insist that he will continue on in this race, even if he uh, suffers a devastating loss here tonight. Uh, when talking to Cruz campaign officials, I asked the question, will he potentially consider dropping out? And a Cruz campaign official admits to me that, you know, this is constantly a calculation that he as a candidate undergoes, uh, pointing that he has prepared to drop out at times in the past over this campaign. As we reported back in March when Senator Cruz uh, was able to win Texas, we reported after the fact he would have gotten out if he had not won his home state. But the Cruz campaign certainly facing a grim reality, the math, the momentum, the narrative around their campaign is quickly changing. Uh, all signs point to some frustration on the part of Senator Cruz. Jake. All right, Simon Sarfati at Cruz Campaign Headquarters in Indianapolis, Indiana. Let's now go to CNN's political director, David Chalian, who has some fresh information from the exit polls. Uh, obviously, still too early to say who's doing well and who's doing poorly, but we do have some information about who turned out to, the, to, the, to vote today, David, and why they turned out. 
That's right, Jake. And some of these numbers will shift uh, throughout the night as we get more data in. But we are seeing something that we've seen in previous contests on the Republican side, which is that the electorate is not out there voting today to express opposition. Take a look at this. We asked Indiana Republican primary voters, are you voting mainly for your candidate? 74 percent said yes, they are. Twenty five percent said they're mainly voting against their candidate's opponent. So not that much of a protest vote and consistent with what we've seen in several of the primaries now. Also, we asked folks who ran the most unfair campaign in Indiana. Take a look at this. Cruz and Trump are about even there. 42% say Cruz ran the most unfair campaign. 38% said Trump. John Kasich, who you know, bowed out of Indiana way down at 8%, but, but pretty much equally split there, uh, roughly so, among Indiana Republicans about who was running the most unfair campaign there, J Jake. David, who are the 8% who thought John Kasich ran the most unfair campaign? He, did, he didn't even run a campaign in Indiana. <laughs> That's right. We, I don't know who those 8% Track them are. down for me. I okay, appreciate it. Okay, we will it. do. We'll get back. All right, thank you so much. And let me bring in my colleague, uh, Dan Bash. Dan, this is a huge moment for the Republican Party. If, if Donald Trump wins Indiana this evening, which is certainly a possibility, uh, it's, it's almost going to be impossible to stop him from getting the magic number of delegates he needs before the convention. It absolutely will. I, I just got off a plane from Indiana. I was there uh, yesterday and last night at a cruise rally. And you, you can feel it's, it's palpable. The voters in Indiana get how important it is. It's not that often that they have such power. But they understand that this is truly a pivotal moment. If Ted Cruz doesn't win because he has put all his eggs in this basket, if he doesn't win Indiana, uh, they insist inside the Cruz campaign he's staying in, that he will have a path forward to stop Donald Trump. That's all it is. But there's no question it changes the dynamic. It changes uh, the momentum. It changes the narrative in every way. It, 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 it just makes it so much harder for him to say and everybody to say Donald Trump is not going to be the nominee. Indiana, theoretically a state that he should be able to do well. And let's go to Wolf Blitzer right now. He has a key race alert. Thank you. This is the first key race alert of the night so far. The uh, polls in the eastern time zone in Indiana, they are closed very, very early. Initial numbers right now see only less than 1% of the vote is actually in. Donald Trump uh, with 61.4%, 23%. Uh, for Ted Cruz, 11% for John Kasich. But once again, maybe a couple thousand, if that, votes have been uh, counted so far on the Republican side very, very early. Trump building up a slight, uh, a significant lead, I should say, but it's still very early in Indiana. On the Democratic side, uh, also very early, Hillary Clinton uh, with 63.8%, 36.2% for Bernie Sanders, but only, what, 900 or so uh, votes have been uh, tallied so far. Uh, Hillary Clinton, 228 votes ahead of Bernie Sanders. Once again, very, very very early right now. We're standing by for more early votes coming in for in, from Indiana. Donald Trump says the GOP race is over if he wins tonight. We're taking a closer look at the delegate stakes, the end game, as we get closer and closer to possibly projecting a winner.